My name is Jason Ayub, and I am the Horn Professor at Towson University in Towson, Maryland. Today's video will be on one of the great pieces in the woodwind quintet repertoire. The Chimney of King René was an adaptation of music Darius Mio composed for the 1939 film Cavalcade de Moore. This piece is one of his best known works and one of the most popular 20th century pieces for the woodwind quintet. The piece is a collection of medieval miniatures. The movements are very short with an alteration between nonchalant and very rapid tempi. The shortest movement is under a minute in length with the longest being just three minutes. This gives the impression of an entire piece in just one breath even more so because the musical atmosphere changes little between the movements. In all, the suite is just around 13 minutes. In this video, we will be looking at the third and fifth movements, in particular, the approach and techniques we horn players need to use to play in the woodwind quintet. Now, I know for me, the single most frustrating thing as a young horn player was being told to play softer in the woodwind quintet. Over the years, I have developed a very simple technique that really helps me to play a little softer. This technique is as simple as putting more hand in the bell. As you can see, here's my normal hand position. I use a little bit of a cupped hand, and I'd say that my fingertips are right about where the ring for the bell is. In order to use a little bit of a softer sound, I will take my hand, straighten it out a little bit, and cup the thumb in because I'm going to take the hand all the way up to the knuckles in the bell. So now my knuckles are at the ring of the bell. So there's quite a bit of hand inside the bell. Now there's a twofold reason that I do this. The first is by actually adding more hand in the bell, it creates a little bit more resistance, which actually helps us to center the notes, especially in the upper register, with a little bit more ease. Also, because the sound does become softer, it allows me to use a little bit more air, which we know is very important, and therefore adds a little bit more security in that aspect as well. Now, this is not a magic cure for soft playing. We do have to develop a soft playing in our embouchure. One of the great exercises that I was given as a student is to practice just air attacks. So I will have my students start with a G in the staff, and really work on starting the note with the most efficient buzz possible. Now we horn players must remember that our notes all begin with the P sound, or really the beginning of the P, the P, P-U-H if I had to spell it out. It's this. And then from there, the buzz continues. This is a great exercise to practice just on your own to make sure you're getting a very efficient starting buzz. So then we take that straight to the horn and practice a beautiful relaxed air and then beginning the buzz. This is a great exercise to help us learn to have control as you can play it on every note and learn to really control and have the muscle memory you need for all entrances. This is a great exercise to use for the beginning of the third movement. At the beginning of the third movement, it's marked mezzo forte. You start a C in the staff and you want to come in beautifully and delicately to follow what the oboe player has just given you. You're in an excellent duet with the oboe player, with the bassoon and an underlying ostinato, and you want to be beautifully balanced with those other two players. Also, at the beginning of the third movement, you want to make sure you take a large enough breath so that you can make all eight bars without having to take a break. Now, let's move on to bar 17. 
This is another great example of having super control starting your notes. You could take the same exercise we just did and practice starting that D so you know exactly where to come in for that passage. Also, this is a great place to use one of my other favorite techniques, which is alternate fingerings. I know many horn players have a problem slurring from that high E to high F sharp. So instead of playing that F sharp second valve, why not play it one and two on the B flat side? It really helps me to facilitate a much smoother slur. For example, Just by that simple changing of the valve, it really helps make the note smoother. If we look ahead a few bars, we notice that Mio has dropped us into the lower register and making us play staccato. Many young players do not spend enough time in the lower register, and so I would spend quality time making sure I know exactly where low F sharp and low E are. I would also practice eighth notes on those two notes, very much like pizzicato for string players. Once I had those notes with security, then I would practice the F sharp to G sharp leap. I would start by slurring that and then adding the staccato. Then I would practice the F sharp to low E. Then I would put it together. The last thing I would like to look at in this movement are the last four bars. Mio has given us a great little line that we need to make sure that we have impeccable time on. The biggest problem with this particular line is the turn on the and of one, so we need to make sure that, that all four notes fit on the and of one. Let me play that turn for you slowly and then up to speed. And at tempo. Thank you.